All right, I tried making a video of this and it was uh, kind of a disaster. So I redid it and uh, let's take a look how everything turned out and then I will uh, show you how I did it. So when the ball hits this box, the event occurs that causes this little piston to look like it's shooting out and comes out here. So uh, let me explain what I did here to make this uh, look like it was like a piston shooting out. So first off, um, the metal bar here doesn't actually move. This thing just slides back and forth. And it actually does that through uh, physics. And I'll show you what I mean. When I simulate it, you can see that it's not actually attached, but it, uh, it does have constraints on it that try to tell it to only move along the X and Y axis. So it's not going to fall up and down. It's not going to let me do that. So in order to do that, I, uh, I created this physics actor and I checked the Z axis as locked position. I locked all three of its rotations, but it's allowed to move freely forwards and backwards or even uh, anywhere along the X and Y and Z axis. Um, mine is turned at an angle. You could probably get away with locking yours just X or just Y, but um, since I'm at an angle, it was a little bit more complicated. And as you can see, I can move it this way and this way, but not up and down. But I'm only doing that again because mine is at an angle. If you, if you uh, are perfectly aligned with the grid, you can just do one of them unchecked. I don't know, depending on which direction it's heading. You can experiment with it. So then what I did is I put a radial force actor in right here. And you can't see it because it's hiding, so let me find it in my outliner. It's this one. If I hit G in game mode, you can see. And you can see it's a very small little radial force, just big enough to, to knock this thing. Um, straight ahead I tried to put it directly in the center didn't do a great job no I haven't seen that and okay there we go and the radial force uh, I said it the number that I used was 20,000 but you know that's only because it's so small so it needed a big number to give this thing a nice push um and you have to uncheck activate so that it's not activated in the game. And you can see that uh, it's going to become activated. And because it just barely overlaps that guy, um, it'll give it an, a little push right over there. Now, you don't want to put it too much over here or this happens. And then the illusion kind of goes away of this little piston moving. So you got to kind of finagle it. Play around with your impulse, sorry, not your impulse strength, your force strength. Ignore this one for now. And uh, experiment with it by keeping it activated until you like the way it moves, and then you can uh, deactivate it. Now, to get your code working, the first thing you got to do is make sure that this sphere right here is set to uh, um, under collision. It's got to be... Simulation generates hit events enabled. And then the same thing with this. Simulation generates hit events. Make sure that's enabled. And then with this cube selector, whatever you want it to hit selected, you got to go into your uh, level blueprints. Go into uh, right click and type in hit. And on actor hit. Now I already created it, so there it is. You're also going to need to get... Uh, the thing that you want to activate your radial force in this case you got to bring that in just drag it make sure it's the right radial force and I found for mine that I had to also pull in this sphere because I needed it for something too and I'll show you that in a second so I brought that in and so here's what this code is saying right now it is saying that when you hit the cube Let's ignore this part for a second. Activate the force component in the radial force actor 3 so that it can push it and launches it. What I'm doing with this little piece of code, this is like an if statement in coding. Um, this is what's called a branch in Unreal. 
is I'm checking something first because when I when I skip this and I went straight to here, I'll, I'll just ignore this part for now. Watch what happens when I run my code. What was happening is something was hitting this thing. I think it's these dominoes, even though they weren't set to hit, but um, it was detecting a hit by these guys, and then it wasn't waiting for this ball. So this little piece of code allows me to first check and see if the thing hitting it is the sphere. And this is all I had to do. I uh, typed in branch right here, zero if statement. If something reads true, this is going to happen. If something reads false, nothing's going to happen. You could have something happen, but in our case, nothing. And all we want to do is see if this sphere equals the other actor that hit the cube. Are they equal? So I'm just going to put equals and just tie those together. Does the sphere, this particular sphere, match the thing that we want to hit that thing? So now if anything else hits this, nothing's going to happen. It has to be the sphere. It's not until the sphere hits it. In fact, if I duplicated this sphere, put it in front, this one is not going to cut it. It's not the right sphere. Nothing's going to happen. It's not until, and at this point, nothing, it's not even ever going to hit it. It's not unless that original sphere right here, that's the one we designated in the code hits it, that it's actually going to cause the code to run. So again, this is the uh, final code. And one other cool thing you can do is you can actually hit play while you're looking at your code and it's saying, oh, something hit me, but oh, now it's the right thing. So the first time something hit it, it was the wrong thing and nothing occurred. And just to kind of give you some idea of what's happening, watch this. You can see when the false one occurs and when the true one occurs. False one's right away, so that must be the dominoes. The ball just hit. And that's it. So, uh, how do you go away? No, I want you to deconnect. Oh, I have to hit stop. Right. Break that. Okay. So that's, uh, that's how you can get code to occur. And if, if you need this part, use it. But if you don't need it, you know, cause you don't have like something else on there that's hitting it, then, um, that's fine too.